Today is a special moment because we are going to explore the philosophy of Stoicism and how it can be a practical tool to build the ability and courage to live the life we have always wanted. Stoicism, coined by Zeno of Citium around 300 years BCE, emerged from Zeno's personal experience of losing everything when his ship sank. After arriving in Athens to seek answers to the tragic event, Zeno began his philosophical journey by reading about philosophy and becoming a student of Crates, one of the great Athenian philosophers. Unlike other schools of philosophy of their time, the Stoics wanted to engage in discussions with people to discuss life and how to make it better. Stoicism then spread to Rome, reaching its peak with Emperor Marcus Aurelius, passing through figures like the slave Epictetus and influential figures like Seneca. Over time, Stoicism broke the rules of its time that forbade women to study. Women instead hosted convivia, a form of gathering with friends to discuss philosophical teachings. In this video, we will use some of these teachings to discuss seven things we should do to face our fears and build self-image, security, and confidence. 1. Do not fear the judgment of others. In Epictetus's time, there was a group of people called sophists. They were intellectuals skilled in debate and rhetoric. However, a sophist was also someone who sought approval, entering debates not to gain new knowledge but to show off to others how articulate they were and how smart they were. The difference between sophists and stoics is that sophists seek knowledge to be appreciated by others, while stoics seek knowledge to improve themselves without worrying about others. In our lives, we will meet people who will build us up and people who will try to bring us down, or at least try to do so. However, there are ways that can help us avoid these situations which are to remain silent, take no direction, stay in place, or never improve. But what is the benefit of doing nothing for fear of hurting someone's feelings in these situations? How are we different from a rock that just continues to exist? We will continue to exist, but it's not just our existence that makes us special. It is our journey, our path, and the difficulties we face as human beings that make us grow and develop intellectually and even physically. Criticism or other people's opinions of us are beyond our control and therefore we should not give too much importance to them. What we can control is acceptance. We must accept that with every action we take, we will be judged. If that is the price we have to pay to achieve our goals, then pay the price. Don't be afraid to make changes that may be detrimental to how people perceive us. In this situation, what is the difference between us and a rock that will just continue to exist? We must continue to exist, but it is not just our existence that makes us special. It is our journey, our path, and the hardships we face as humans that make us grow and develop, both intellectually and physically. 2. Don't doubt yourself too much. Doubt can be our biggest enemy. Daily life is often characterized by the fear of not feeling capable when trying new things. There is a poem called The Centipede's Dilemma, often attributed to Catherine Curter, which describes the relationship between overthinking and cowardice. In the poem, a centipede walks with ease until a frog asks how it coordinates all its legs to move forward. The centipede thinks hard about this and suddenly cannot move, confused about how to coordinate its legs. Similarly, when we think too much, we become paralyzed by confusion and can no longer act as boldly as we did before. We were created to act, not just to ponder and plan. Too much time spent in the past or future usually keeps us stuck because it is the thinking that creates fear. However, when our focus is entirely on the present, the will and courage to act becomes inevitable as there is no longer time to dwell too long on everything that could go wrong. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Concentrate every minute like a Roman on doing what lies before you seriously and sincerely, freeing yourself from all other distractions. Stop your emotions to overcome what your mind is telling you. We cannot foresee the future despite our predictability studies. We know that things can fail. Thinking clearly is key. Our minds often run on automatic, leading us to judge everything we experience. When we see our lives as I like and I don't like, everything we don't like becomes torture and causes complete suffering. The same happens if we replace them with, I feel confident doing this, 
and I don't feel safe doing this. But if we think clearly in every situation, we can see our activities, obligations, or goals without the burden of past emotions, fears, or negative experiences. Consider Igor. He was getting his driver's license, attending all his classes, practicing on weekends with his brother. But just thinking about the practical exam made him tense and anxious, so he panicked on the day of the exam. Struck by anxiety, Igor ends up disappointing himself by failing the exam. If he had evaluated the exam clearly based on his ability and preparation, he would not have let fear and insecurity cloud his judgment. Stoicism teaches us to act more consciously after the initial emotional impression. We should go beyond the initial fantasy. Instead of being moved by fear and insecurity, take control and act calmly and enduringly. When you set your mindset accordingly, you will find that things no longer bother you like they used to, and you will go through life more easily. 3. Don't doubt yourself. Everyday life is often characterized by the fear of not feeling capable when trying something new. Epictetus, a slave who became one of the greatest Stoic teachers, faced very little chance of being remembered as a great Stoic philosopher and teacher. However, his belief in his ability to provide value and seek knowledge, albeit as a slave among the sons of the rich in his day, is an inspiration to us all. Confidence in oneself sometimes feels like an innate trait, and if we are not born with it, we feel disadvantaged throughout life. However, this is not the truth. People can learn to believe in themselves, especially when negative feelings arise such as feeling that we have nothing to offer the world or don't deserve what we have or want. For example, I personally have never believed that people cannot change since childhood. I have always looked for ways to learn and improve myself since childhood. That's how I came to know Stoicism. However, when the idea of creating a channel on this topic came up, I was very hesitant and felt that I had nothing to offer. Today, reading your comments and testimonies makes me really happy with the changes you are making in your lives. If you're struggling to see the amazing qualities you have and all the good you can offer to make the world a better place, a few simple actions can help you believe in yourself again. Consider all the goals you've already accomplished and set new ones for the future. Make new friendships, engage in constructive conversations, seek new perspectives on life, find opportunities to use your talents, and take good care of yourself. 4. Look for solutions, not causes. Our internal fears tend to look for causes rather than solutions. The reason is that finding solutions requires the difficult task of making real changes within ourselves. Shifting the responsibility to others sometimes feels easier because finding solutions requires the difficult effort of making changes within ourselves. Sometimes asking others not to blame us feels like a heavy demand. However, often blaming others results in the opposite of finding solutions to our problems. Instead of considering how or what is the right way to solve the problem at hand, we think about who is actually at fault for the situation. The antidote to blaming others is humility. Contrary to popular belief, understanding how to deal with the consequences of our actions and mistakes is not only an exercise in maturity but also a powerful boost to personal development. Learning to take responsibility for our actions not only promotes personal development, but also contributes to building healthy relationships. 5. Rationalize your fears. Epicurus suggested that our primary task is to rationalize our fears and free ourselves from the mastery of sorrow and fear. As he became a teacher, he emphasized the importance of rationalizing our fears. If we carefully analyze each fear, we will see that many of them have no real basis, and the only reason we feel fear is because of a greater fear, which is the fear of social judgment. Epicurus challenges us to realize that in many cases these fears are actually desires. For example, when we fear losing our jobs, it is not only because we will be unemployed and afraid, but also because of the critical views of others and reinforced by the possibility of being judged as a failure in front of everyone. In today's world, unreasonable fears are admired by us. Over-ownership and consumerism breed so much fear and anxiety in us that it is easy to be tempted to believe that every desire is a vital necessity for our existence. 
consider the fear of not owning a car. This particular fear can cause a lot of anxiety, leading us to believe that owning a car is the key to survival. While a car greatly facilitates life, at the end of the day, it is just a means of transportation, and there are many other methods of transportation that we can use without the need to own a car, such as public transportation or ride-sharing services. Of course, there are rational fears that have remained consistent throughout history, such as the fear of not having access to clean water, food, shelter, safety, and facing mortal danger. These are fears that even our ancestors experienced, and therefore we must reconsider what we fear today and filter out the rational fears from those that we mistakenly perceive as rational. One of the ways suggested by Epicurus to overcome fear was to study philosophy. For him, it was philosophy that raised awareness of fears and how to deal with them. 6. Find the beauty in your mistakes. Mistakes in life are inevitable. If we are afraid of making mistakes, we will become slaves to perfectionism, afraid to act so as not to make mistakes. No matter how well we do things, seeking perfection will never be achieved. Excessive fear of making mistakes and never being satisfied with our own efforts makes us cruel critics, not only of ourselves, but also of those around us. Facing the fear of making mistakes and never being satisfied with our efforts is a grueling journey. However, there is potential liberation from this negative cycle by finding beauty in making mistakes. The Japanese art of Kintsugi is a good example. It transforms a broken object into something beautiful by repairing its cracks with gold, silver, or platinum-plated porcelain. The crack in the object becomes the main focus and the most beautiful part of the object. Likewise in life, we all carry the weight of our past, including visible scars. Even today, the fragility of our lives can be seen and the imperfections associated with us. The devastation of time leaves marks, scars, cracks, and signs of continuous damage and repair. Sometimes we try to hide these imperfections, but Kintsugi does not hide the history of cracks. Instead, it highlights them and makes them a feature of beauty rather than something to hide. 7. Rationalize your fears. It may sound strange at first to be humble and courageous, but in history, the story of the emperor's new clothes illustrates the link between pride and cowardice. Excess pride can make us cowardly towards anything that might harm our ego. Just as the emperor was unwilling to admit that he could not see the clothes that did not exist for fear of appearing foolish or incompetent, Excessive pride can make us cowardly towards anything that might harm our ego. By humbling ourselves, we actually become braver because we are not afraid of making mistakes, being wrong, or hurting our ego. Remember how small our part in everything is, how our allocation of time is so short and passes so quickly, and how small our role is in destiny. Don't be afraid of what others think. In his time, Epictetus faced a group of people called Sophists, they were intellectuals skilled in debate and rhetoric. However, a sophist is also someone who seeks approval, entering debates not to gain new knowledge but to show off to others how articulate they are and how smart they are. The difference between sophists and stoics is that sophists seek knowledge to be appreciated by others, while stoics seek knowledge to improve themselves without worrying about others. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope this information and Stoic philosophy can provide useful insights and help you face your fears, shape your self-image, security, and boost your confidence. Feel free to share this video with friends and family so that we can spread this life-changing knowledge together. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.